Hello again everyone. Welcome once again to the prayer slot on this Friday, June 18, 2021. Well, here we are again. We're still in a, a semi-lockdown, aren't we? Um, still many restrictions on our liberties. And uh, whilst many people are accepting this um, for the wider good of everyone else, uh, there's much frustration and anger by many people and, and some people committing disobedience, of course. But as followers of Jesus, uh, we have uh, fruits in our life. And one of those fruits is the fruit of patience, patience. And others surrounding that are love and peace and self-control, self-control, brings patience, patience, self-control, and these things together can bring us a peace. So how are we as God's people to act in all of this that's going on at the moment? Well, if you'll turn with me uh, in your Bibles to the letter uh, of Paul to Titus, which follows the two letters to Timothy. So it's the letter to Titus, um, and I'm going to read from chapter 3. For the first eight verses so if uh, if you're ready we will begin remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities to be obedient to be ready to do whatever is good and to slander no one to be peaceable and considerate and to show true humility towards all men at one time we too were foolish disobedient deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures we lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. And I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. So we are being reminded here. We're being reminded to be subject to rulers and authorities. Well, um, Paul wrote to the Roman church uh, a few years earlier and uh, he wrote in chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 these words everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities and bear in mind that they weren't good governing authorities in Rome at that time for there is no authority except that which God has established the authorities that exist have been established by God Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so <clears throat> will bring judgment on themselves. So this is what uh, uh, Paul is reminding us of again when he writes to Titus, uh, to remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities. And he goes on to say, to be obedient to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate and to show true humility towards all men. In the second letter of Timothy, chapter 2, just a few pages before uh, this particular passage we're reading, in the second letter to Timothy, chapter 2, in verse 19, we read, Everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. And then it says, if a man cleanses himself, this is verse 21, if a man cleanses himself from wickedness, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. So coming back to uh, Titus then, uh, chapter 3. 
in verses 3 to 5, uh, we're reading, At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, because we could never do anything to earn our salvation, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Because of his mercy. So we are saved through Jesus Christ, and we've been justified, that is made right with God, by the grace of Jesus and through that we become heirs to eternal life. Finally in uh, verse 8 we're told to devote ourselves to doing what is good. Devote ourselves to doing, doing what is good. So in the midst of a world that's full of hatred, discord, disunity, strife, even personal difficulties in our own lives. Let us keep trusting in the Lord. Let's keep trusting him, uh, the maker of the heaven and earth and everything that's in it. Let's trust our living God. And also, while we do this, let us be obedient to the laws of the land. That is where they're in compliance with God's law. Let us be obedient to the laws of the land so that we can live in peace and tranquility together. And let us ask the Holy Spirit to help us to avoid actions of disobedience and, and ask him to take away frustrations in our life, to avoid frustrations, because frustrations can cause bitterness within us and that bitterness can sour our relationships with other people around us. So we must pray to the Holy Spirit to fill us with his love, his peace, his patience and his self-control so that we can uh, experience the other fruits of our life, joy, joy in our life. And then through this joy, we'll spill out the kindness, goodness, gentleness and faithfulness that, that the Holy Spirit wants to build into each one of us. And all these will make us... Um, a more loving and flavoursome person and it will make us a more loving and flavoursome body of Jesus Christ here on earth that will attract others uh, and hopefully make others want to come in amongst us. So there's a few thoughts then from uh, that letter to Titus. I hope it helps you in your prayer time as uh, I would pray that you would lift up our government at this time Pray for wisdom for them. Pray for strength for them. Pray for unity amongst them as well as they seek the better good of us all in going forward through these difficult times. So let's keep praying for our leaders. Let's pray for our leaders to follow God's laws and to uh, uphold righteousness in our society. Anyway, let's just uh, join together in prayer now. Uh, before we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the love that you have for us and for the grace and mercy that you've poured out on us and, in fact, keep on pouring out on us in and through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit who helps us to grow and strengthen the fruits in our lives so that we can live righteously in a crooked and a depraved world <coughs> help us particularly Lord to grow patience so that we will not get frustrated or angry because we know that anger and frustration grieves you as we grow that patience help us to know and experience your peace so that we can be a source of strength and encouragement to each other and to the wider community prepare us Lord during this time of liberty liberty to be ready to do the works that you have ready for us to do. <coughs> Prepare us to do these when we are free once again to mix more freely. May we be ready, Lord. May we be poised to carry your gospel of truth to a hurting world. And through it all, may you be glorified, Lord, 
in all that we do as individuals and as a corporate body. So we want you to be glorified in everything, Lord. And we ask this in the precious name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Church, I hope uh, that those th few thoughts will help you now if you want to spend a quiet time praying for various things around what we've thought about. Goodbye now and God bless you.